Promoters selling structured sell of payment rights intentionally mislabel annuities may be duping investors into believing that these annuity imposters may enable the investor to receive statutory protections under state guarantee funds in the event the underlying insurer is liquidated. Usually, the promoter's sales pitch includes the weak disclaimer that they make no promises in this regard. Kind of like when you were a kid and you were gossiping and you said, you didn't hear this from me, but dot, dot, dot. The June 2020 state legislative brief published by the National Association of Insurance Commissioners states that the Guarantee Association system ensures that consumers can purchase insurance products with the knowledge that their coverage will be protected in the event of a future company failure or insolvency. In order to ensure policyholders are adequately protected from such failures, in December 2017, the NAIC adopted revisions to the Life and Health Guarantee Association Model Act, number 520, to address issues and concerns with guarantee fund coverage and assessments for any future long-term care insurance insolvencies. Industry groups support these amendments and work cooperatively with regulators on them. Section 3A5 of the Life and Health Guarantee Association Model Act is relevant to the topic of our discussion today. This act shall not provide coverage to a person who is a payee um, or a contract owner resident of this state if the payee or beneficiary is afforded any coverage to the, by the association of another state or a person covered under this paragraph or subsection if any coverage is provided by the association or another state to the person or, and this is very germane to what we're talking about here today, a person who acquires rights to receive payments through a structured settlement factoring transaction as that is defined under 26 U.S. Code Section 5891, subsection C, 3A. Regardless of whether the transaction occurred before or after such section became effective, an increasing number of states have adopted the revised model act and others have them under consideration. Obviously, other states have to adopt the model or their own version and it could take years for them to all do so. Some settlement planners have actively pushed, some are actively pushing factored structured settlement payment streams to plaintiffs and personal injury settlements through independent assignment companies or investments for the plaintiff's settlement preservation trusts and to trial lawyers for attorney fee deferrals. In a minor settlement petition to an Arizona court which I reported about on my structured settlement watchdog blog in 2013, I gave an example of how a settlement planner had apparently advocated for the use of what is mislabeled secondary market annuities for a minor Arizona plaintiff to compete with structured settlement annuities. I opined in my then commentary that structured settlement payment rights, which are not annuities and not regulated insurance products, and were represented to the Arizona judge's annuities, was misleading to the court. The original Yavapai County petition also falsely stated to the court that the annuities issued from the secondary market are issued by Liberty Mutual. I saw a similar thing in a New York case where a factored structured settlement payment streams were purported as a qualified funding asset, claiming that the annuity issuers met life. Acquired structured settlement payment streams are not annuities and therefore the statement is false on its face. Even if arguendo the Yavapai County statement were true, Liberty Mutual did not issue annuities in the secondary market. Subsequent to the settlement planner's representations to the court, Arizona adopted revisions to the Model Act Number 520 in their section 20-682D, and it contained the express exclusion of structured settlement annuity benefits to which a payee or beneficiary has transferred the payee or beneficiary's rights in a structured settlement factoring transaction as defined in the relevant uh, U.S. Code section regardless of whether the transaction occurred before or after that section became effective. This is an unfortunate example of where selling a product with a misleading statement could come back to haunt a vulnerable person. Furthermore, the statutory issue paper number uh, 160 of the National Association of Insurance Commissioners effective April 2019 makes it clear that factored structured settlement payment streams are not annuities or insurance products. I continue to encourage the National Association of Insurance Commissioners and my colleagues in the industry to scrutinize the activities of licensed insurance agents and entities, as well as unlicensed promoters who, number one, misuse the term annuity to insinuate an insurance product while selling factored structured settlement payment streams. They may have even used insurance company logos to proliferate the falsehood and insinuated statutory insurance protections in their websites or marketing materials and solicitation of investors undermining the prohibitions on such activity contained in state insurance laws across the country. 
While such investments may have a place for sophisticated investors, trial lawyers and judges should carefully scrutinize the use of such investments. Furthermore, they should have a fundamental understanding what they, their clients, or their clients' trusts are buying are not insurance products. Multiple legal court cases show that factored structured settlement payment streams have risk greater than that of legitimate annuities, which may make such investments inappropriate for vulnerable and unsophisticated persons. If you'd like to know more, feel free to call me at the number below. Thank you. I'm John Dare. Have, have a great day.